Welcome to the Better Together Here podcast with your hosts, Devin and Ashley, helping you make the most of your time in New York City. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Better Together Here podcast. My name is Devin. And my name is Ashley. And in today's episode, we are going to hopefully save you from falling into some classic tourist traps in New York City. We're going to cover three of them. And the one at the end legitimately will end with you just getting money taken out of your wallet. Yep. I've seen it. It, I've seen it happen. We have seen it. It is not good. So stick around for that one. So let's get right into it. The first one is scammers as you are going to try and see the Statue of Liberty. So let's clarify things here real quick. There is one cruise line or one boat company that can actually go and like dock where the Statue of Liberty is. And it is called Statue City Cruises. When in doubt, you can go through the National Park Service website and make sure that you're getting the right one. What will happen is as you go down into Battery Park and you're near the area where those boats are boarding, or as you're walking towards the Staten Island Ferry, which we'll talk more about, you will get people who will come up to you and say, oh, you, you need to pay to get on this. Or, hey, like you want to come on our boat tour because like it's the best one and they'll have all these reasons and they'll try and convince you and they'll just try and overwhelm you, which is what most scammers do. The reality is, like I said, only Statue City cruises. So if, you're, if you want to actually go to the Statue of Liberty and go to the island, go to Ellis Island, just do it online to avoid these scammers. But there is a free way to go and at least kind of go by the Statue of Liberty. And that is via the Staten Island Ferry, which we have done at least once. Yeah, several. I, th- I think a few times, actually. It's a, it's a great option if you want to see the Statue of Liberty, but you don't want to spend a good half day doing Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island, all that. If you just want to see Statue of Liberty, get kind of close, check it off your list. This is a great option for you and it's free. 100% free. So as you are going, as you're navigating to get on the Staten Staten Island Ferry, some people will try and say, oh, you've got to get a ticket to get on there. And they'll, you know, try and swindle you. Just don't fall for it. You just walk past them, go get on the Staten Island Ferry. It runs every like either 10 to 40 minutes, depending on the time of day. And you can get a good view of the Statue of Liberty from a bit of a distance, but it's completely free. So don't fall for that scam. Which leads us to the second tourist trap, which genuinely frustrates us on a daily basis. Yep. At least, at least every day. Every day, I would say. Anytime we are outside in New York City. So that's every day we get frustrated with this. And that is the pedicabs and the horse-drawn carriage ride. And maybe let's talk about the pedicabs first. If you don't know what a pedicab is, it's the bike on the front. And then the kind of like a bench seat on the back. And these guys, they're almost always guys, they will come cruising down the street and they will ring their bell and they'll yell at you and they'll have music playing nauseatingly loud. Not going to lie. Sometimes it looks like they're having fun, but it's never fun when you see people getting off of those. So don't, don't, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. So what these guys will do is they will tell you a certain price and you'll see them a lot of times near Times Square, specifically as you come out of Broadway shows, there'll be dozens and dozens of them just ringing their bells, yelling at you, being annoying. You'll also see a lot of them at Central Park, at the entrances to Central Park, especially on Central Park South, which is where a lot of people end up going into the park. What they'll do is they will tell you a price and then they will not charge you that price when you're ready to get off. They will have like signs on their thing that say flat rate or whatever, and they'll kind of be vague. And then as you go to get off, they will charge you a different amount. Uh, One time when Ashley's mom was visiting, one of her friends, uh, a little bit uh, of an elderly woman, she went to get on a pedicab. She was going from I think 55th, 56th street, like somewhere in that area and going to the metropolitan opera house which is on like 60 in the low 60s yeah yeah 63rd somewhere in there so we're talking 
seven to eight, nine blocks maximum, which if you were to do that in a taxi, that would be, I don't know, maybe like eight ten, bucks, 10, $12 maybe after tip. Yeah. Not a lot. Not a lot of money. I think in fairness, she was having a hard time getting a real taxi and thought that this would be a reasonable alternative. And boy, was she wrong. So she gets on the pedicab. She gets off at what she's excited for, a fun night at the Metropolitan Opera House. And the guy charges her a hundred plus dollars. I think it was over two hundred dollars. Two hundred plus dollars. I've like blocked this memory out because it makes me so sad for her and just for people in general. And she wasn't like an older woman. She's not gonna get in a fight with this pedicab driver in the middle of the street. Like what what is she supposed to do? He's saying, Oh no, it's gonna be two hundred plus dollars yeah, for, and- for this ride that you already took. Yeah, exactly. Um, At that point, you've already taken the ride. Like, you don't really have recourse to be like, well, no, thanks. I don't want to do it. And it's like, well, you, you did the ride. Yeah, exactly. You used the service. A lot of times they will have their price on the side, but I don't really trust that they stick to that. And their prices on the side are outrageous. And there's no way that they clearly communicate that beforehand. I've seen prices from four ninety nine a minute to nine ninety nine a minute just to ride on their bikes. Which, like, for context, you could rent a city bike for, I think it's, like, 30-something cents or 40-something cents a minute for an for an e-bike. Or you could take a taxi, which, again, like we said, you know, if you're going 5 to 10 blocks, which likely is the furthest amount you'd be going on a pedicab, you're going to pay anywhere from, like, 8 to maximum $15, $17 with tax and tip, even during rush hour. Like, and to your point earlier saying, oh, this lady wasn't going to fight someone. There have been at least two times where we have personally been walking down the street, doing our thing, and we hear shouting, which you get a lot in New York. And we look over and it is the one time I remember in particular, clearly this this man with his girlfriend or wife was being dropped off at a hotel. They were tourists. And it was kind of a, a burly dude, which was interesting. And the pedicab driver was like kind of a small guy. But they were in a full-on shouting match. They were screaming at each other. And the gentleman, the tourist, was saying, there's no way in hell I'm going to pay the amount that you're telling me to pay. Like, that is not fair. That is atrocious. Like, it's completely ridiculous. That's not what we talked about before. And they were screaming and yelling at each other. It's not what you want. It's not what you want. I don't know how it ended because we kept walking and I didn't want to see like an actual street fight. Although, I don't know, maybe we should have stuck around. But consider yourself warned. Just don't do it. An alternative, if you want, like, if you're coming out of a Broadway show, what, what do you recommend? Like, what's the, but if you're, because that's where you will see them a lot. You're coming out of a Broadway show. You just had a good time. You're like, oh, we, we're going to go get food or go to our next destination. And there they are. And they look so enticing. It, it does seem tempting because when you're coming out of a Broadway show, you're being pushed out into Times Square, which is so busy. And there's so many people all at once. So don't be fooled. They're not, they're going to take it the slowest way. You're not going to have fun, but I would recommend f- like walking four or five blocks away from the theater, like away from Times Square and then catching a cab. Yeah. I mean, you don't even have to go four or five blocks. Like even if you just go a block or two or like if you're on, for example, 7th Ave, like just moving over to 8th Ave or 9th Avenue, like wherever you are, you can, or 10th, like four or five blocks. <laughs> No way. Like three, like, okay. If you're on 7th Ave for a show. You can have a way easier time walking four or five blocks. Any, anywhere in Times Square, that, that 10 block radius from 6th Ave to, te- to 8th Ave is not fun at night. But even if you spend 10 to 20 minutes trying to hail a cab, if you don't want to walk away, that's still a better option than a pedicab. Yes. That's anything, anything is a better option than a pedicab. But to Ashley's point, the more you're willing to walk away, like at least a couple blocks, a few blocks, you're going to get a taxi much, much easier. Or if you're hailing a Lyft or an Uber, they're going to actually be able to get to you because that's the other issue with trying to hail an Uber or Lyft in Times Square is that it's just so difficult for them. Like the roads are one way, it's congested, there's tours, like it's just, it's too challenging. So take Ashley's advice, walk five blocks away. Another reason I say that is because the cabs, like actual yellow cabs, will charge you by the mile or the minute. 
And so if you're in a spot that's really crowded and there's a lot of traffic, you're automatically going to pay more just getting in a cab. It's true. So my advice always is if you're trying to get transportation, walk away from the big crowds. Agreed. And similar to the pedicabs, there's another one that is also in Central Park. It's the horse-drawn carriages. And this one's tough because you see it and it seems so magical. It right? seems iconic. It seems like the best way to go and see Central Park. But the truth of it is there's those horses are not happy. They're not. And there, if you go online and try and read about this, there's like really kind of conflicting information. And I think that the like carriage companies have tried to get good PR and good press, but you can also find videos of horses collapsed in the streets. There have been horses that have died doing these horse-drawn carriage rides. We personally have seen where they stay. It's imagine like a three or four story kind of smaller New York apartment and they have these tiny rooms that these horses are staying in and their heads are sticking out of the windows. I've seen it personally. It's not good. It's not good. They're not in good living conditions at all. And they'll make them stay there on the side of the street for hours with no water. Whether it's super hot, whether it's the middle of a blizzard, they're just there. It's sad. Like, even if you're not a super animal activist or if you don't, I don't know, like, even if that's not something you really jive with, it's just... There's no reason for a horse to be living in Manhattan. Yeah. And we walk by them every single day. And more often than not, I see the horses being pulled and prodded. And that's they they just don't seem happy. You can tell. And it's super expensive. I, I looked it up once. I think like the cheapest ride, you're looking at like $70, $80 or more. Yeah. Which, again, so as an alternative... If you're going into Central Park, and let's be honest, like everyone's situation is different. Maybe, you know, you have a physical ailment, you're not able to walk very far, whatever it might be. There are alternatives. You can rent a bike, you can do a city bike. Even just walking into Central Park, you want to go see something down in the lower end, like you want to see where the carousel is. And then you also want to go see a different part of Central Park. You know, you could go back out of the park and take a subway up to the more northern parts or whatever it is. Like, there are alternatives and if you know your health is not a concern just it's a no on the horse drawn carriages just walk like you can do an awesome loop in central park that would maybe take you an hour or less and you can see all the main things you can see the carousel you can see the mall you can see the literary walk you can see bethesda terrace and bethesda fountain you can walk by the pond and see where the boats are like you can see so much in less than an hour and if in all in all honesty like if you don't have an hour to devote to central park like you're not going to have a good experience anyways and that's what that's how much time it would take to do the horse-drawn carriage so like there are alternatives yeah exactly so don't do the horse-drawn carriage rides so far they have been you know they're going to cost you more money than you need to this last one this last tourist trap we fell for this at least once or twice when we were traveling here. It just seems so fun. It looks it, like a party when you walk It looks like by. a party, but they make it look like that. On purpose. So we're talking about the break dancers. You will find them in Central Park. You will find them by Brooklyn Bridge. You will find them in the middle of Times Square. They always make it look like there's a big party going on and everyone needs to come up and watch and see what's going on. And there's no other way to say it, but they're swindling people. So what they do is they'll they'll lay out some cones where they're kind of building like their little arena to block space and to get stop people from walking through there. And they'll start playing really loud, fun, upbeat music. Uh, usually they actually do, you know, like... One um, or two minutes of yeah. actual break dancing. So they'll have one, maybe two people start to break dance to loud, fun music. And they'll say, gather around, the show's about to start. This is just the intro. Come around, come, walk right up and they'll, they will stop you from your path and make you like come over if you don't say, no, sorry, I have somewhere to go. Like they're very persistent. Like, oh, come on, take 10 minutes, come watch the show. Yeah. And they do that, I think for two reasons. Like obviously they want to make it look more busy, but I've found, I think they're, they're trying to fill the perimeter so that people walking by can't actually see what's happening. And so then they're forced to stop and like try and get a view to see like, oh, it's New York City. This has got to be something cool going on. So they get this big crowd gathered. 
at that point, there's no more break dancing. Like, yes. let's just be clear about that. Like nothing else is going to happen the rest of this quote unquote show. The, the rest of it is another 20 minutes of them. They essentially line people up and pretend like they're going to have one man jump over this huge line of people. And they'll purposely grab the tallest guy in the crowd and they'll stack up five to eight people. And then essentially they go around and take money from the crowd and say, we'll jump higher if you give us more money. And they go around with the bag asking for donations so that the people that are being jumped over don't get hurt. And it's aggressive. Like the way they're asking for donations is aggressive. The one thing I've seen them do as well is they'll get whoever like is the eighth guy in the line that's going to get jumped over. They'll go up to him and say, hey, do you want to not be at the end of the line? Like give us $20. Like that kind of stuff where where it is, I can't use any other word than aggressive. Like it's just overkill. Oh, absolutely. Or they'll come up to the person in the line and say, if you don't want your daughter to get hurt in this, pay us money because we'll jump higher. Or, oh, your girlfriend's here. We'll jump higher if you pay us. Oh, your boyfriend must be cheap. He doesn't want to pay for you. He doesn't care about your safety. Like they're absolutely ruthless. It, yeah, they they will like demean you. They will just make you feel like an idiot. They will make you feel so dumb for like not giving them money. They've also, you know, literally gone up to people and said, you know, hey, we need some money. And they'll say no. And then they'll have them like pull out their wallet and be like, oh, what's this? Like, I see money here. Or, you know, they'll say, oh, what's this nice watch you're wearing? Like they, they just just don't fall for it. So if you see these crowds, if you see what looks like, oh, maybe it's people break dancing or there's like people in a line and like there's lot like just know that it's just a scam. They're going to put this on for like 15 to 20 minutes, just long enough to like get enough of a crowd, take money from people. And then they end it by jumping over what? Like one person? They jump over one person and it's usually a child. They will like somehow get everyone out of line. Like you think that they're going to jump over the whole group of people and then they will just end up jumping over one person. And then the show's over and you've lost your money. So don't fall for it. Literally, you will get money taken out of your pockets in theory. So as an alternative, if you're walking by this and you see it happening, just keep walking. Don't fall for it. Like if you need to go close enough to verify that it is what we're describing to you, that's okay. But then just walk away. Don't stay. They'll always try and pull you in and get your money. And what you can do as an alternative, especially if you're in Central Park, is go find a real musician. Go find people who are, there's, especially on the weekends, in the summer, spring, you know, pretty much any time besides the middle of the winter, you'll have people playing guitar. You'll have, you know, there's a, a guy who plays the violin. There's a guitarist. There's there's a drummer. Like, you can go find people who are actually putting on a show and making music. You can often find them near Strawberry Fields, which is kind of on the Upper West Side. You can find real musicians at the mall and the literary walk. And then there's almost always the wonderful guitarist at Bethesda Fountain. Underneath uh, Bethesda Terrace. Yeah. So go find a real, real musician. To recap, the three scams to avoid Statue of Liberty scammers, just take the Staten Island Ferry. If you want to see the Statue of Liberty for free, take the Staten Island Ferry. It is always free every day at all times, as long as it's running. The other is to not fall for the pedicabs and the horse-drawn carriage rides, you will lose a ton of money. And for other reasons, we didn't mention either. The pedicab drivers, it's a safety issue. They're super unsafe. Oh, in the way that they drive? Yeah. Yes. They they run all the red lights. They weave in and out. They take up the entire bike lane, which as a biker is very irritating because they never check their blind spots and they will mow you over. And so you don't want to get on that. And the last one, the break dancers just don't fall for it. Find some of these other alternatives. Make good use of your money. Time in New York City, there's so much to do. So don't fall for any of these tourist traps. Anything else you want to add about these tourist traps? Just take our advice. Don't learn the hard way. We learned for you so you don't have to. If you haven't already, follow us on Spotify, leave a review on Apple Podcasts. All those things help this podcast get more exposure, send it to a friend who's going to visit New York, save them from falling for a tourist trap. And other than that, we will catch you on the next episode.